Today I'm here with part four of my February wrap up for 2019. I ended up reading a total of 28 books this month, which means four parts to this wrap up. So without further ado, let us get started. So the first book that I have is called On the Edge and this is by Alison Van Dypen and I ended up giving this a two out of five stars on Goodreads. I did not enjoy it very much. It follows Maddie Diaz who one night on her way home she witnesses a very violent crime against a homeless man and she decides that she is going to stop the crime so she ends up calling the police and that puts her as the newest target for a very violent gang called the Reyes. She soon realizes that she is actually being protected by a rival gang leader named Lobo who is determined to stop the Reyes. Not knowing his identity, Maddie has no way to thank him and as time goes on they become closer and she ends up falling in love with him and it's like that story. So if you've been on this channel for a while you know one of my biggest pet peeves is insta love and this book is like the epitome me of insta love like she literally has no idea who this man is and she falls in love with him like she doesn't even see his face and she's like i love him i also just hated maddie's friends is and carmen are both terrible people and i don't understand why Maddie put up with their bullshit for so long, it just drove me insane. The book was very predictable, so I wasn't really enjoying reading it because I knew what was gonna happen and then that's what happened. I also didn't connect to any of the characters, didn't care what happened to them, so overall just a super meh book for me. The next book I have I enjoyed a lot more than I thought I would. It's Kill the Boy Band by Goldie Moldowski. And I just want to point out how freaking pink this book is, so love that for me. But I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It follows four teenage girls who are obsessed with a band called the Ruperts, and they discover what hotel they are going to be staying at for their next concert, so they decide that they're also going to book a room at this hotel. Upon arriving at the hotel, they start making a plan on how they are going to run into the Ruperts and, you know, get all the pictures, all that fangirly stuff. They never expected to kidnap one of the group members. The book is very fast paced and a lot funnier than I thought it was going to be. I've seen a lot of mixed reviews for this book so I will admit I was going in with very low expectations and what I got was like this dark humorous take on fandoms and how over the top obsessive they can be. None of the characters are particularly likable but I ended up loving all of them to be honest. I'm also a huge fan of unreliable narrators, so I really like the narrator. I know a lot of people complain about her and how, like, we never really get her name or anything like that, so she is very unreliable, but personally, I'm a fan. So yeah, like I said, 3.5 out of 5 stars. It was not what I expected, but I enjoyed what I read. The next book I read, I gave a 4.5 out of 5 stars, and it's The Wicked King by Holly Black. This is the sequel to The Cruel Prince, which I read last month and I love this book. I personally think that the political storyline is more flushed out in this. I've read a couple of reviews that say that they don't feel this way, but personally, that's what I think. I loved trying to figure out what everybody was planning and who I could trust and who I couldn't trust. I will admit that the beginning of the book was a bit slow, but it definitely picks up as the storyline progresses, so I liked the middle end way more than I did the beginning. I still love Jude. She is just so feisty and fierce and just so determined to be what people don't think she is and I just oh, love her. I think she's a really great strong female main protagonist. Cardin is still an asshole but I still love him. I don't like their relationship. Like I've said before, it's not healthy but you can't help but want to read more. Like, it's just so sexually tense and you're just like, mm, are they gonna kiss? Are they gonna fuck? We don't know, but then we do know. And it's just a great time. Also, the tale, I was expecting more from the hype on Twitter. It wasn't as, you know, terrifying as I thought it would be, but 
I'm here for it. I also really loved learning about Cardin's past and learning more about him. You really see why he acts the way he does, which does not justify it, but still was nice to see why. I also really loved the supporting characters. They all had some sort of purpose in the book, and all I'm gonna say about the supporting characters is that Taryn can choke. And that's all I have to say about this book, but it was really good, so 4.5 out of 5. The next book I have is called Belzar, and this is by Meg Woldser, and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. After being unable to cope with the death of her boyfriend, Reeve Maxfield, Jam is sent to the Wooden Barn, which is a boarding school for troubled teens. Upon arriving to the Wooden Barn, Jam discovers that she is chosen to be part of special topics in English. When Miss Q assigns the first journaling assignment, Jam sits down and starts writing in the red leather notebook that is provided, and she discovers that she is able to transport to the alternate universe called Belzar, which allows her to be with Reeve once again. I really liked learning the backstory of each teenager and why they ended up at the wooden barn, but I will say that I was disappointed in the reason why Jam had to go to the wooden barn. Her obsession with her boyfriend of 41 days, may I add, was just a little bit creepy. I know when you're a teenager, things seem like so much more, you know, lovey-dovey, but like, girl, it's been over a year since his death and you're still moping around. You barely knew him. Move on, please. Honestly, I was just more interested in the side characters than Jam and her story. I would have much preferred for it to be more of a focus on them, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. I loved the idea of Belzar. I was so intrigued with the whole concept and that world but not a huge fan of jam, so that's why it's only a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I have, <laughs> 1 out of 5 stars, I really did not like it. Could probably do a rant review on how stupid this book was, but it is Tantalized by Cynthia Latish Smith, and it was just not a good book. It follows Quincy, who after the death of her parents, decides that she is going to reopen her family restaurant, but with a vampire theme. Her best friend, maybe boyfriend, kind of, we don't really know, named uh, Kieran, is a hybrid wolf, and that means that he is a werewolf, but he's not able to transform into that wolf. So is he really a werewolf? Hmm. He's almost at the age where he is going to have to leave her to go and find his own wolf pack among the wolves of the society. Then the chef of the restaurant is suddenly killed at what appears to be a were thing attack. Quincy has to find a replacement before the opening night and that's when Bradley comes into the situation and he is an adult and um, starts seducing her and um, sh did I mention that she's only um, 17 so <laughs> Hmm. So yeah, that's um, the synopsis and um, Quincy's dumb. She makes literally the stupidest decisions that she could possibly make in every single situation. She's supposed to be a senior in high school, but she acts like she is five years old. She spends three quarters of the book drunk, um, so that's a fun time. And then she discovers that she is being turned into a vampire by Bradley and her uncle. And then they force sexual things on her, and it was just a lot to take in. So, there's also were possums. So, who decided that was a good idea? We don't know. But yeah, I would not recommend reading this book. If you want like a full rant review, I got you. I could do it. Let me know down below. But, um, I would pass on this if I were you. The next book that I have is Kill Switch, and this is by Neil Bear and Jonathan Green. And I was super excited about this because these are the writers for Law and Order Special Victims Unit, which I was obsessed with in high school. I would watch it every single night, but I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I originally gave it a 4, but then dropped it down as I thought about it more. The book follows Claire Waters, who has landed her dream job as a psychiatrist, and she is assigned Todd Quimby, who is a inmate at Rikers Institution. He's a very troubled individual, but she likes these cases because it distracts her from her own troubled past. When Todd is released from prison, a body count starts to pile up and she is convinced that he is behind it. So she goes to the police and that's where she meets 
detective Nick Lawler and they work together to stop Todd Quimby before he strikes again. Honestly, this book is ridiculous and none of the things that happen in it would ever happen. A lot of people say that they didn't enjoy this book because it is so far-fetched, but honestly, the TV show was exactly like that. It was so far-fetched. There's no way that you could solve a mystery like this in two days, but they do and that's that's the fun of it. I dropped my star rating down 0.5 because the main character Claire really pissed me off. I could not get past the dumb decisions that she made. She's supposed to be a psychiatrist, but some of the things she does, a psychiatrist would never do, ever. Like, for instance, spoiler if you're gonna read this book, but Todd Quimby has a specific type of person that he likes to murder, so she decides that she is going to have a makeover in order to look like this type of person in order for him to react, and when he reacts by you know, trying to rape and kill her, she, like, acts all surprised and starts crying and freaking out, and I'm like, bitch, you brought this on yourself. Like, I don't... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The other main character, Nick Lawler, was a highlight for me. I really enjoyed his character. He's not, like, some macho, masculine man who has to, like, take over. He's just, like, a super relatable character, in my opinion. I really liked him, so... Overall, it was really entertaining. Obviously, never would happen the things that occur in this book, but I was here for it nonetheless. And then the final book that I have for this part of the wrap-up is When I Was the Greatest by Jason Reynolds, and I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars. This follows 15-year-old Ali, who lives in New York, where violence and drugs are very common, so he tries to focus on family, boxing, and hanging out with his neighbors, Needles and Noodles, to distract him from all of that. Noodles, his best friend, has always been a hothead, and he always feels that he is the one who has to diffuse the situations that Noodles finds himself in, and then one night, something very drastic happens, and Ali has to decide whether or not to stand up for his friend or finally let him go. I think that Ali is one of the most often voices that I've read in YA before. I really liked him as a main character. I also liked how it showed that very small misunderstandings can be blown up to wild proportions and it was really nice to see how it all resolved in the end. I really liked the secondary characters in this. I love Jazz. She is Ali's sister and super sassy and just a little bundle of joy to be honest. And then Needles who is the other brother, neighbor of Ali. He has Tourette syndrome and just everybody supports him so much and stands up for him and it's just really nice to see. It's a really great message of, you know, acceptance is more important than your reputation and I really liked it. So, yeah. Alright guys, so that was my part 4 wrap up for February 2019. Let me know if you guys have read any of these books and what you thought of them and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!